Okay, so while we're steering our school in a positive direction, how can we get make this a more like fun educational experience for seniors? Like how can we get, you know, like it better? Like I like I walk the halls and I see the pictures on like it looks it looks better. But how can we make it like an experience for them because it's their last year here right and then for us next year will be my last year well you know a lot of it and, and it's funny you asked a question last week um for spirit last week for spirit week it was a lot of fun i had a lot of fun and i i really well, it was two weeks ago i'm sorry i really uh, enjoyed myself for spirit week um and i haven't been involved in that much fun in a school setting in a long time um but, you know, that's all part of high school. And I think that's part of what we need to bring back to Reading High School is that it, it's okay to have some fun when you're in high school. Um, now, you have to know when it's time to have fun and when it's time not to have fun. But, you know, I remember last year um, going to the basketball game at the Sovereign Center and how much fun, you know, the kids were having in the stands. Um, getting You know, when, when Reading High School was, was playing Central Catholic, that's fun. Um, but there has to be a balance. Has to be a balance with having some fun, but also making sure that you know the academic requirements that we have here are, are met before graduation. So you have to strike a balance. We can't have fun each and every minute of the day, but you know we can do some fun things as a group. And I think the pep rally was a was a neat way for us to end the week for Spirit Week. Um, and I hope the kids enjoy themselves. But you know that that's really that, that's what high school is about. Um, you know, and high school really, you can make it into a lot of fun if you make wise decisions. Um, and, and that's really, if, if you're going to make wise decisions and, and make sure you have a balance between having fun but also saying, hey, you know what, I do have work I need to do um, during, for my last year. It's funny you said sports. Like, our school, like, we're really big on sports, I think, especially basketball. Like, basketball season comes around, and a lot of people go to the games. But what are, what are you going to do for the athletes who don't do as well as they should in class and then expect to play? Is it going to be the same as it was before, where everybody gets the same treatment, but he gets straight A's and she gets straight D's? Like, is there going to be a difference? Well, I, I will say this, um, is I'm expecting more from my athletes in terms of being more of a student athlete. Um, the struggle for me is seeing watching a kid who will play basketball or play football or golf or whatever the sport may be. And then you take a look at that child's uh, performance, academic performance, and their grade point average is lower than a 2.0. Um, and then you say to yourself, am I doing the right thing as a principal and telling this student, hey, it's okay for you to play basketball for our school or football, whatever sport it may be. Um, but it, it, it's not okay for you to have the academic performance that you have. Um, and that, that, that's a struggle. There, there's no way that we should have students who have lower than a 2.3 playing a varsity sport because they're ineligible or they can't play um, their first year in college. You know, they have to go to a junior college or something. So it, that's a C average, a little bit above a C average. Um, there, there's really no reason why any student can't come here and focus on his academics or her academics to have better than a C average by their senior year to be able to play a varsity sport. Um, that That is a little bit of a struggle for me to, to see that. So, you know, I will say that our coaches have been very aggressive uh, in terms of checking in on grades. I see a lot of the sports teams here at 6 o'clock in the morning um, doing tutoring or doing their homework to make sure their grades are right. Um, and it really has to be student first, athlete second. Um, that it, because there have been too many individuals who that's been reversed. Athlete first, student second. And 10, 15, 20 years later, that did, has not panned out for them as well. So student first, athlete second. Use your athletic ability to get you in the college to the point where you don't have to pay much money. We just have a student, Amani Brown, who um, we just found out last week, who has almost a full ride to the University of Alabama uh, for track. So he's used his, his athletic ability because from an academic standpoint, he's a, a superb student, and he's used that to further himself in life um, and used his athletic ability 
to get almost a full ride to the University of Alabama. So that is a student athlete. With sports like um, as I, I played freshman basketball and I couldn't balance coming into the new school, all the busyness and my grades and, and basketball, I couldn't do it. So I got like bad grades and I had to make the decision I had to stop playing basketball. I had to get this back because this is not what I want. Like basketball was a hobby. And for like my coaches, like not Mr. Andrew but like the other coaches, they were just like, it was all about basketball. And I'm like, this is not what I want. It's a hobby. So like, it's good to see that change because it's a privilege. It's not a right. And I have friends that come here and they're like, if it wasn't for basketball, I wouldn't even be here. And it's, I don't think it should be like that. So and we already talked about how we can get them more motivated. But in terms of like, like music, I'm gonna say music. Some students come here for music too, and our music programs, like, we're getting short, like we're getting cut short supplies and everything. What can we do about that? Well, I, I will say that, you know, of, of all the districts that when you read in the newspaper in terms of them cutting a lot of their, their music programs, um, the Reading School District has done an excellent job in trying to maintain uh, a lot of the programs that we have here. So, um, it, it, it's hard for me uh, to cut anything in terms of knowing that that may be a hook for a kid. So if, if there's something that a kid really enjoys doing, and will will in his interest level or her interest level will increase that. Um, why not tap into that? Because that definitely, in terms of when we talk about motivation, that definitely could be a motivating factor for them. So, you know, I don't see, I don't see foresee in the Reading School District how we would ever look at cutting um, any of our programs like that based on the fact that the, some of those programs have uh, really been key to um, helping our students be successful um, at Reading High School and going forward and going to college. I think, I think that's good too. Um, I think to make our, our school like more fun, I think an idea would be like a leadership program or anything like that. And we can like get people to like donate money for like fun activities. Like like last year we had a field day, that was pretty fun in our in our um, field. And we have a track field. We can that's like ideas towards the end of the school year after the tests are done, after our results. Like that that can probably be something to think about. But do you have any questions or comments to me as a student? Well, um, I, I want students at Reading High School to have a voice. Um, I need to hear, we need to hear from you um, because at the end of the day, um, you're the client. So I think the students at Reading High School need to be able to speak. Now, if you're saying that I should give you four hours for lunch, that's not going to happen. But, um, you know, we want you to have a voice in terms of some of the things we're doing at school so that we can better serve you and the students that, um, that go to Reading High School. Okay. Um. Yeah, for our lunch, no. I think the lunch line, talking about lunch, I think the lunch line, it can be better, but just two makes it slow. So if we had like one more lunch line, it would be okay. Mm -hmm. But um, let's see. Why, why is our school and this community so important to you? Well, I grew up in the city of Reading, so um, uh, that is definitely something where when you're attached to the city, you know, and you grew up and, you know, a lot of the, the students that go to, to Reading High School now, and you know, I grew up with some of their parents and um, although I did not go to Reading High School, um, still uh, playing sports against um, Reading was always fun, but, um, you know, I, I live in Berks County, so for me, it's really basically proving everyone wrong. Um, you know, uh, as we've discussed in terms of some of the negativity that surrounds this school, um, just being able to be part of the puzzle that was able to help turn this school around um, is something that is very near and dear to me. Um, is really something that I'm passionate about. And, you know, I, like I said, I just want to be part of the puzzle um, so that when we put the puzzle together, um, you know, we can really prove to people that the magic can happen here at Reading High School. So when you grow up in the city of Reading, um, you know, some good, some bad. Um, but it's really about being a part of something that I think, I really believe is going to be special down the road.
compared to when you went to Reading High, did you see? Do you see any major differences? Well, I didn't go to Reading High School, oh. but um, um, you know, uh, once again, I did have the opportunity to. Um, you know, hang out with a lot of, at that point in time, students who went to Reading High. So, um, but major differences, um, not really, honestly, not really. Um, you know, I have a lot of family members who went through the Reading School District, went to Reading High School, played sports for Reading High. Um, it, it's more of being able to take Reading High School and make it an elite school. Um, how can we become the best so to compare it between now and well, I can't tell you how long ago I'd be telling you how old I am but comparing it from now until a long time ago I, it's hard for me to say what the big uh, difference would be um, but you know but I will say is that you know I'm looking more for towards the future in terms of where we are headed not so much w where it's been in the past that's true. But why do you think it took so long for us to try to make a difference? Like, what, what was the problem before that we couldn't steer it in a positive direction before? Why? It, once again, it's hard for me to say. And I, I don't want to speak to um, or speak for others who have been, been in the seat, you know, before I got there. Um, I, I, I will say that I, I think that that Reading High School, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, with the size of the building and how it was before, um, having four to 5,000 students in the building at one time, you know, for a long period of time, Reading High School was the largest school in the state. Um, that, and right now I see what it looks like with 2,200 students, you know, given the fact that CTC is only there half day, what that looks like, I, can, I can't imagine what it looked like with 5,000 students when that bell would ring um, and what that looked like in the hallway. So it, it just seems like it would be very easy for kids to get lost in the shuffle because there was just so many of them. Um, so if, if you're going to say a difference between now and, and years ago, it's probably the size of the school and the fact that it's been cut in half um, with opening the, the Reading Intermediate, uh, the Citadel, uh, down the street. That's probably one of the biggest changes I'm going to say um, that I see now compared. It's just not as large as it was.